The main character's mom is dead. It happened on a wedding trip. The woman hit the girl and asked the girl how dare she act like that. The woman shouted, asking if the girl realized where she was and where she was sticking her insolent face in the first place. The woman wanted her to know her place. Duchy of Arpad. This is where the protagonist found herself when her mom got married once again. The woman yelled at the main character because if it wasn't for Isolde, Tristan would still be alive. The protagonist was there for the benefit of her mother's happiness, even if she didn't enjoy it. However, that house soon became a place she should not have been. Mom told Ophelia she'd be back soon. It had been a little over a month since the girl had been in the duchy, and now she had to get ready to leave. The protagonist's mother was born into a rural farmer's family. The surroundings were no match for her beauty. She was like a white crow. Grandpa said that there was nothing more important in the world than money, and was going to sell my mother to a landowner whose age was already over 30. Mom, however, did not want to spend her precious life in such an insignificant place. So one night my mom left home. She escaped with the mercenary who walked past the village, and based in a small port town in the south. And afterward, the main character was born. I wish I could say it ended well, but that's not the case. My parents fought because they couldn't afford to live in such an affluent neighborhood. The girl's mom asked the man to make them live because he could. Ophelia's mind was filled with memories of her parents' constant quarrels. Soon, when my father went to a neighboring town for a few weeks, Mom ran away, taking Ophelia with her. She looked like a butterfly, distant at any attempt to reach out to her. Ophelia kept fretting, not wanting to let go of her hand. Even though they were mother and daughter, their relationship was fragile. Ophelia realized that if her mother was not pleased with her, she would abandon her just as she had abandoned her father. The girl didn't want that to happen. Taking the entire family fortune with them, she and her mother headed north. The farther one went, the higher the prices became. So the money they had on hand ran out almost immediately. Mom ended up selling the ruby ring Dad gave her. Then they immediately learned that their father had died trying to quell the rebellion. When Mom was widowed and things got worse, she fell in love with a knight who owned feudal land. However, a few years later, the new dad passed away from sepsis. Mom was pining terribly. But after a while, she befriended a baroness who was being served by Ophelia's new father. After that, she came to her senses in a flash. Baroness Blanche. Mother became the companion of the frail madam, and then she started escorting me to appointments. The young and lovely widow was gifted with many male gazes. The baroness said to let her friend give her a hint if she liked a certain gentleman. But, unfortunately, the one who had a hold on Mom's soul was none other than Baron Blanche himself. There was a strained relationship between Blanche's spouses, since their marriage had only political grounds. Then, the baroness fell ill. Madame Blanche's strength gradually left her, and she soon abandoned her last precept. She asked that the main character's mom take care of her husband. Shortly after the funeral, my mother married a baron. All the people were very judgmental of her because they thought she had gotten close to Madame for the sake of it. People assumed this was the original plan because it had only been a short time since the funeral ceremony. However, strong compared to his wife, the baron was struck down by illness, and the year the protagonist turned 19, he died on the way to a hunting trip falling off his horse. Mom didn't realize what sin she had committed, that her husbands were leaving one by one. When all those who mourned the baron's passing had departed, and my mother shared her sadness alone, they were visited by Duke Arpad, a friend of Baron Blanche. Even after the funeral ceremony was over, he stayed at the mansion and continued to help them. Going out into the garden sometimes, Ophelia often saw the Duke with her mother, and when it was time for him to leave. They were so close that they were perfectly comfortable, holding hands and hugging. Ophelia asked her mother if they would go to the duchy. The moment the carriage departed and her mother turned around to look at her daughter, Ophelia realized something. Pretty soon, Mom will be the Duchess of Arpad. The following year, when the scandalous rumors about Mom began to subside, mother and daughter went to a new home. Her mother told Ophelia that she had heard that the Duke's former consort had left this world right after the birth of the heir, and now her mom is going to be the new Duchess. The mother didn't understand why her daughter wasn't excited about it, but the protagonist said she was glad and smiled broadly. Ophelia said that if Mom was happy, so was she. The Duke said that he missed Isolde very much and invited Ophelia affectionately. People were talking over the mother, and Ophelia heard it all. A voice sounded, the huskiness of which had not yet subsided due to puberty. He mouthed Ophelia's name, and his stanza was like an ice sculpture. 
The boy asks Ophelia if she is now his older sister. The guy's name was Alexander. It was the protagonist's first encounter with him, from farmer's daughter to mercenary wife. The guy introduced himself. Ophelia noticed that he was very tall, from a knight's wife to a baron's wife. Ophelia met Alexander. He was pleased to meet him. Alexander said he could be addressed on a first-name basis. The main character has a brother for the first time. Following her mother, the last place the protagonist found herself in was the Duchy of Arpad. The protagonist was kicked out by a woman swinging at her, but then Alexander came up and grabbed the arm of the woman who wanted to hit Ophelia once again. Alexander said the woman is blaming the wrong person, and his sister is also tired and having a hard time. The woman was angry that he said sister, and told him not to bullshit, because that girl isn't even in the Arpad family. People began to whisper. Ophelia didn't want to listen to this whispering, and wanted them to speak openly because she intended to leave this place. Ophelia started to run away. Alexander didn't realize where she had run off to. The girl only wanted to stay here until the end of her mother's funeral ceremony. After all, Ophelia's mother is no stranger to her. Even though my mom thought happiness was more important than Ophelia, she remained the only mom in the whole world to her daughter. If Ophelia had known this would happen, she would have followed her mother. Ophelia would have asked if she could go for once. I'd say it wouldn't be a hindrance. And now the protagonist is alone. Ophelia stroked her horse. Alexander didn't understand where she was going at this late hour. The protagonist didn't understand what the questions were. The girl said she was leaving here. Ophelia wondered how long he'd been standing there. Alexander grabbed her hand and asked where she was going and why she was leaving the house unannounced. Alexander said he wouldn't allow such a thing. Ophelia asked to be let go because they're not having a contest. Alexander repeated that he would not let his sister leave. The protagonist didn't understand why this was so because Alexander himself was uncomfortable with her. She didn't understand what he was trying to hold on to her for, Ophelia asked, as Alexander gave one reason to stay. Alexander said that if she left the mansion too, there would be no adults left in the house. But more importantly, Ophelia may be putting herself in danger. The main character asks since when she's an adult here, because just like that woman said, she's not even on the Arpad family registry. Alexander said it wasn't a problem, because if she wanted to, they could formalize it tomorrow, but Ophelia said she didn't want that. Ophelia asked Alexander to stop, because he's not five years old anymore to act so infantile, and asked him to let go of his hand. Alexander let tears fall. The guy apologized, but Ophelia said she was the one who overreacted. Alexander told his sister that he was very scared and lonely. He said the news of a new mother and older sister discouraged him, but he was happy about it. However, before he got used to it, his mother and father left this world. He felt like he'd been abandoned. There are no survivors in Alexander's family. The main character reminded herself when she thought of being all alone. Alexander can't stop thinking about the fact that he is all alone. Ophelia put her arm around Alexander. It felt good for the guy to have his sister hugging her. Ophelia said that she thought Alexander would be better off if she disappeared. The boy didn't understand how such a thing could have crossed his sister's mind. The main character said that she just felt that she was not welcome here, neither Alexander nor the other inhabitants of the duchy. Alexander said it was true that he had felt some kind of rejection the first day they met. Such a small person was older than him. Her father told her to call her big sister. Ophelia pulled at his cheeks, and the boy apologized. He asked them to come inside because it was very cold outside. The guy asked that his sister promise not to leave the house late at night again without saying another word. Ophelia asked what would be different. The brother was unable to answer. Alexander asked as his sister simply promised that she wouldn't. Ophelia apologized and said that she couldn't and that she only came back today because he was sticking it to her. However, if Ophelia lingers here, rumors will spread after all. They had only been brother and sister for a month and she has no excuse to stay here. Alexander said that even though they had only been beaten relatives for a month, they were still brother and sister. He's also well aware that she's not comfortable in this place. Ophelia asked Alex what he wanted to tell her. He asked that she stay at the mansion at least until he was an adult. The protagonist apologized and said he still had three more years to go until his adulthood and asked if he wanted her to wait that long. The guy said he would make sure no one else touched her and she would stop feeling uncomfortable. The protagonist wondered if Alexander had always been like this. It's very strange. Alex doesn't look like himself. In the end, Ophelia decided to compromise. 
she asked that Alex promise that if she wished to leave in three years, there was no way he would hold her back. That night, she couldn't understand the real reason, by which he wished her to remain in the duchy. Alexander agreed with that. Uncle Adrian apologized to Alex for being late. My uncle said he would hurry, but he ended up missing the funeral ceremony. He asked if his interlocutor was the lady in question. The man said she was having a hard time right now, too, and at the same time asked her what her name was. The protagonist said her name, and they shook hands. Cassie asked if Adrian could see her. The man said that he's certainly that he sees their second beauty. However, he's still more attracted to this girl. Adrian was asking my lady how old she would be this year because he had started looking for a bride. But Alex asked for his uncle to stop. The boy asked Alex if he had come to the Duchy of Arpad to find a bride. The man said it wasn't part of his plans, but so, in between, he didn't mind. Grandma came over and told Alex that they were still talking. The sun was very warm today, and so the woman suggested he go to the flower garden. Alex didn't understand what Granny was talking about. The woman said that since Tristan was gone, a lot had fallen on Alexander's shoulders. So they want to stay in the Duchy of Arpad and help him out a bit. It was the first time Alexander had heard this, and he picked up on the fact that she spoke as if it was already settled. The woman said he was busy, so they exchanged views. Cassie asked if she could change her quarters. She justified her desire by saying that the dining room and living room were very far from the guest room, and said it would be nice to have her quarters with his, and see each other even more often. Auntie's room, too. Cassie said that yesterday she had looked around the mansion and found quarters that would suit her aunt's taste perfectly. Alex thanked him for his help, but she'd had enough. Cassie said he himself would be more at ease with them. Alexander said he didn't need it because he was fine. His aunt had told Alex that there were no adults left in the duchy, so he should not be stubborn and take their intentions into consideration as well. The boy looked at Ophelia and asked why they said there was no one left, because this is where Ophelia's sister is, after all. Cassie began to scream. Now the protagonist understood why he was begging her not to leave. His aunt told Alex that he was still young, so he didn't understand. She asked that he listen to what the adults were saying now. The heir said he was grateful that they wanted to stick around to help him, but he had heard that they had caused a great deal of trouble for his household. Five servants have already taken sick leave today. Alex didn't understand how those that couldn't even manage the people below them were going to help the Duchy of Arpad. Alexander said they should be ashamed. Eventually, one fine day, the mansion was deserted. Alex greeted his sister. The guy asked if it had gone away. Ophelia didn't know what he meant. Alex was talking about the cheek because it got hit really hard. The main character said it was fine, and she would just apply the compress a little later. Alex asked when exactly she was planning to do that, because he'd been out of sorts since yesterday. And while they're at it, they should go upstairs and apply the salve. The protagonist was surprised that he was going to let her into his room. He invited his sister to come to his room. Alexander marveled that his older sister had come to him at such a late hour over nothing. Ophelia just heard that he had a cold. Ophelia wanted to deliver something. Alex wondered if she was looking around someone else's room without permission and remarked that she had no manners. The guy asked what was wrong. Ophelia noticed that just two weeks ago he was acting differently. She didn't understand why Alex was being so friendly. Alex was opening a locker, and Ophelia saw a notebook there. She asked if he kept a diary. The guy was surprised that she saw it, so he asked that Ophelia keep it a secret because he was a little embarrassed. Ophelia asked if she had someone she could tell things to. Alex said it would sting a little, so he moved his hair away from his face. When the guy touched them, they turned out to be very soft. He touches a woman's hair for the first time. They were just like a spider's web. Ophelia said that first and foremost she is a sister to him, Alexander said correctly. The guy took some ointment on his finger and apologetically began to dab at the wounds. Every time the protagonist looks at her brother, she realizes how handsome he is. Ophelia didn't know if it was the white skin or the lovely face. However, the eyes of the protagonist were drawn to Alexander. The guy's done. Alexander had noticed that Ophelia had to be careful not to get her hair dirty. The protagonist thanked her brother and said she would be on her way out. Alexander grabbed Ophelia's sleeve and asked why she was already leaving. The guy immediately apologized, because he did it without realizing it. Ophelia asked that Alex be careful from now on, because no matter how hard it is, he's a man and she's a woman. Alex piped up, that she said she was a sister, not a woman. The protagonist said she was referring to the biological aspect, and basically thanked the guy because I didn't think he'd be so kind. The boy said it was nothing to him, 
and asked that his sister take the ointment with her and apply it after the bath, and then the wound would heal in no time. Ophelia thanked her brother and said that she would probably decline because she thought this time was enough. Alexander realized that he was really going to go crazy at this rate with this woman in the same estate. Ophelia is becoming more like her mom every day. A maid greeted the protagonist and asked if she could clean her chambers because it was a very nice day and there wasn't even any snowfall. So she suggests that mistress take a little walk. Ophelia remembered hearing that the maids were not happy to see her here and were very angry that she was listed in the family register. In this house, not a single maid spoke to the protagonist. This girl was unusual. Ophelia agreed to the cleanup and said she would look in the flower garden. In the flower garden, the protagonist met Uncle Alexander. He was very glad to see the beautiful Lady Ophelia. In fact, the girl thought he had already left the duchy, but he said he was going to do it, but decided to stay a little longer since he hadn't been to the mansion in a while. Adrian indicated that he had no interest in the state because he had enough of his own. Ophelia realized that she had picked a bad spot. Adrian suggested she take a walk together since she had the chance. For what it's worth, Adrian is related to Alex and is an earl. Therefore, the protagonist cannot recklessly oppose him. The man asked if she would let him call her by her first name. Ophelia allowed. Adrian asked if she remembered that conversation from last time. Ophelia had no idea what conversation he was referring to. The man said he was talking about when he said he was looking for a bride. The man also remarked that he had heard that Ophelia had come of age this year. After a short silence, the man asked if he was fit to marry her. Adrian said she would be able to live without any envy of others, though not as luxuriously as the Duchy of Arpad. The protagonist was trying to figure out if he was serious about offering it to her now, and Adrian kept saying that if she would bear him three healthy sons. Ophelia observed that he had no shame or conscience, and did not understand how he could think of marrying a twenty-year-old girl. Suddenly, they were interrupted by a maid. The girl shouted that Mr. Alex was looking for Ophelia. It was strange for the protagonist, because he had never once called her that way. Ophelia asked where she needed to go, but her uncle tried to stop her and tell her to do it later. But the maid said her master had requested that the lady arrive now. The protagonist came to Alexander. He was undressed, and Ophelia wondered how she hadn't noticed it when he was in his shirt. The girl came closer and said he had a nice body. The guy was surprised and asked again, but Ophelia said it casually, so she didn't repeat it again. Ophelia said she came because he called her. But that surprised the gentleman, and he said he didn't quite know what she meant. His sister told him that a maid with blonde hair had passed it on to her. The heir said he doesn't remember all the names of the maids. A guy came to the gentleman and told him it was time to go to practice. Alex said he would be right there. Alexander said that in general, he thought that maid had messed something up. But he was grateful to her because he was able to meet his sister here. The protagonist thought about whether Alexander's words could be believed. The maid said she was really sorry she had lied then. But Ophelia didn't understand why she did it. The maid said her mistress didn't look well. When she saw her wiping the window, you for some reason thought you should help. She begged me to forgive her and said it was her fault. Ophelia put the ointment on the maid's hands and told her not to put it on her arms. Even though she lied, she really wanted to help her. The maid was overjoyed because she hadn't had such a high-quality cream in a long time. Ophelia asked if she had ever used the cream. The girl hesitated, but mistress said she could not speak if she did not want to. By the way, the mistress asked what her subordinate's name was. The maid said her name was Henrietta. After the maid left, the protagonist thought about that maid's action. She looked out the window and thought about how she could look bad, because through this window you can barely see not only your face, but also the color of your hair. However, the maid claims otherwise. Thanks to the fact that the Duchy of Arpad has a long and rich history, the protagonist was able to find hard-to-find books in their library without too much effort. Ophelia found the grimoire book. As far as she knew, there were no mages in the Arpad family, and it wasn't clear what the grimoire was doing here then. Looking to the side, she saw Alex. He slept on the couch. Ophelia swept up that it was already possible to sleep in the bed, Alexander noticed that his sister was absorbed in reading. The girl didn't realize when he had time to wake up. The protagonist said he was consumed with sleep the whole time. Alex said, apparently tiredness had made him a little drowsy. Ophelia asked if the book he was reading was interesting. The guy confirmed this and said she found it very entertaining. The protagonist of the piece was stupefied by one character nearby. As a result, he started committing one murder after another. 
The writing style was a bit boring, however, the character who kills the main character at the end, and she found him quite interesting to Alexander, particularly the phrase that described him. Ophelia wondered what it said, Alexander quoted, a newborn that came into the world by ripping open its mother's womb. Alex asked what his little sister thought about it. Ophelia didn't understand the purpose of him asking her that question. Ophelia said she hasn't read the novel, so she doesn't know what's what, but to be honest, it's kind of gross. Alexander asked if Ophelia was leaving already. The girl said it was late and her throat was dry. Alex asked, waiting for a second. He called for the maid. The very maid who had then helped the mistress entered the room. Ophelia realized it was the same maid she had seen yesterday. The girl tried to remember what her name was. Alexander called her Henrietta and asked if she could bring something to drink. The protagonist recalled that yesterday, Alex had clearly told her that he didn't memorize all the names of the maids, and it turns out he lied. In the meantime, Alex suggested that it wouldn't be a bad idea if Henrietta brought something with alcohol. Ophelia said there is alcohol here, and he is underage. Alexander thought about how that was normal, because he drank with his father from time to time, and he said that a little bit is fine. Ophelia realized that her word wouldn't make a difference, so she decided to keep silent. However, judging by the fact that the edges of Alex's eyelids were slightly reddened, he was most likely drunk. Ophelia decided it was time for her to go to bed. Alexander said it had been quite some time since Ophelia had been in the duchy, so he wished his sister would call him Alex. The protagonist didn't understand what the reason was, but lately Alexander's behavior does seem like he's trying to get closer to her. Ophelia is going to leave the duchy sooner or later, and she doesn't understand what this is all about. The girl apologized and said she wasn't ready to call him that yet. The boy thought about his sister's words. He didn't understand why yet. Alex even squeezed out the tears he didn't have. He realized he was in for a rough ride. Alexander called out to Henrietta. He said he doesn't feel like he gave her any orders, so he doesn't understand why she made this circus. Henrietta told the gentleman that Lady Ophelia was unmarried. And if she's in that position to listen to Mr. Adrian, she'll buy it. Alexander said it's funny because Ophelia isn't like her mother, and there's no way Sister Ophelia's gonna put a man around her neck. And that's why all of Alex's efforts went to hell. No matter how fondly he tries to get close to Ophelia, she puts up a wall in front of him and pushes him away, as if to say stop, and you can't go any further. It wasn't like she didn't have any thoughts on her mind, since she was secretly planning to leave the mansion late at night. There was definitely something Ophelia could count on. However, it wasn't clear on what. Alex ordered Henrietta to make sure she knew her place. In the morning, the maid said hello to Lady Ophelia. She said that Mr. Alex asked if Ophelia would have a meal with him. The maid waited for mistress's reply. Pensive, the protagonist asked to tell Alexander that she wasn't hungry yet. It seemed to Ophelia that Henrietta wanted to say something to her. The maid hesitated, and yet said that she had heard that the lady had not yet decided on her personal maid. The main character confirmed this, but said that she feels uncomfortable with anyone serving her. Henrietta said a maid would definitely be needed. The mistress told the maid that she used to have a maid with whom they were so close that they could chat in the same bed. Henrietta remarked that they were very friendly, but Ophelia said it was no good because the next day her ruby necklace was missing. Ophelia's mom kicked that maid out. However, when the necklace was found, the maid was no longer in the house. It was a sad story. Ophelia wanted that maid to go back, but her mother wouldn't let her. It wasn't a very entertaining story for the main character. The protagonist asks Henrietta if she's in a hurry, because surely Alexander is already waiting for her. The maid remembered and said she'd be back. Ophelia said she didn't need to come. Alexander told his sister that she had a bad habit of skipping meals. Alex said that his uncle planned to stay here for another day and asked if his sister liked it. Ophelia said it's a little off-putting. Alex wasn't happy about it either. So Alexander asked to come down with him and offered his hand. Henrietta bragged to her master about her mistress taking her as her personal maid. Actually, Ophelia hasn't given her consent yet. The gentleman asked why she was telling him this, assuming she was expecting congratulations from him. Despite them being in the same room, Ophelia felt like she was being pushed out like a third extra. Ophelia walked over to Alex and said that she was the one who said it, so he shouldn't look at Henrietta with that bloodthirsty killer look. The protagonist asked if they would be going because earlier Alex had said that Mr. Adrian was waiting. Alexander said they would go, but asked them to wait a second. The boy took his sister's hand and said he thought it would be better, and at the same time asked what Ophelia thought about it. She answered nothing, and they went on their way. Ophelia went down as they said she was expected, 
However, her uncle ended up having a meal and said she had been walking for a very long time, asking if she liked to sleep late. Alexander picked up on the fact that it looked like his uncle was in a hurry. Adrian said it was disrespectful to just sit and look at such appetizing food. The heir decided to interrogate if his uncle was going to leave after the meal. The man said he wanted to, but thinks he should reconsider his plans. Alexander tried to say something, but his uncle interrupted him and said he knew exactly what he was going to say, but he had to look that way. Adrian pointed toward the heir's sister and asked if he could return, leaving my lady here with those angel eyes. Besides, like Aunt Alexa said, he's too young to run the estate alone. Alex said he had already expressed that there was enough sister here. Uncle Adrian asked if Alexander thought some commoner girl had a lot of intelligence, and the implication is that if there's a man to lead her, that's different. Alexander was pissed off and picked up on the fact that Adrian was going overboard with his expressions. Uncle asked Ophelia if she thought the same way he did, Ophelia said, sounding a little harsh. Adrian slammed his fist on the table and ordered her to look him in the eye and tell him the reason why he couldn't be her husband. The main character said the problem was his face and age. The man was very angry and asked if Alex was amused because he turned away and covered his mouth. Adrian told Ophelia that there are limits to everything. He asked if she thought she was part of the family. The girl said that as far as she knew, Adrian himself was a distant collateral relative. The man was angry and grabbed a knife. He started stabbing the table, which caused Alexander to ask him to hold his face because he was in the Duchy of Arpad and it wasn't his territory. Alexander said that he did not intend to tolerate his uncle's antics any longer and asked if he thought he would not recognize that he was walking around and probing everything under the guise of a normal promenade. Adrian didn't understand what Alex was talking about and was very indignant. He asked what was wrong with the heir's speech and started saying something about youth, trying to get the topic across. Alexander turned to Count Rasis. The one didn't want to listen to him because his mood was getting worse and worse. Alex asked why he had found documents with the annual revenues of the duchy in the count's room. The count was in complete shock and did not understand how it had ended up in his chambers. He said it was all bullshit and he was being set up. The man swore he didn't take them. Alexander realized he was trying to justify himself. Uncle, on the other hand, was thinking about how he got them. The man decided to defend himself and said that Ophelia knew, because she must remember him telling her that he had no interest in the duchy property. Ophelia assumed he asked the question to get out of the situation somehow, but the protagonist said she doesn't recall such a thing, trying to prove to him that he picked the wrong person. This really pissed off my uncle. Adrian didn't lie. He really didn't steal the documents. That's because Ophelia put them in his room while he was asleep. Ophelia realized that it was slightly unfair, since the documents he had never seen before had ended up in his chambers. Adrian yelled at Ophelia and said that he was going to take her as his lawful wife, not mistress, and she stabbed him in the back. But the girl didn't understand why he was angry with her. Adrian kept telling her not to make a fool of herself, because no one else knows but her. Alexander ordered that he be captured. Last night's identity theft. After seeing Henrietta enter the library and looking around, Ophelia headed towards the Duke's study. Of course, after Duke Arpad's death, the door to the study was locked, and no one could get there but Alexander. However, this was not such a serious problem for the protagonist. She knew roughly where the documents might be standing. Ophelia found them, and further action was simple. All Ophelia had to do was plant the stolen documents in Adrian's room. Don didn't even understand how Ophelia even dared to trample him into the dirt. The protagonist said it was too much because he considered her a bride candidate, Adrian kept yelling at the girl and forcing her to say something. Alexander asked the Count if he was insulting her sister. The man was very indignant at being on this girl's side and thought him ungrateful because his uncle had looked after him for such a long time. Ophelia was pleased that the estate was very large, and also, late at night, there was hardly anyone walking around the mansion. Alexander said the Count was leaving so they should open the doors for him. The man asked to be heard because there was a misunderstanding. Alexander motioned for them to stop. My uncle was very happy and said he had made the right decision. Adrian wondered if Alexander had sent something amiss, too, and suggested that he'd rather throw that girl out. Alexander asked if the carriage in which the Count arrived belonged to the duchy. The servant said it was correct, and this carriage was given to Lady Catherine some years ago when she visited Racist Manor. Alex decided to return the loan. Uncle didn't see how he could get back, because it would take a whole week to ride a horse from here to home. But, Alexander said, 
that's not his problem anymore. The man begged and pleaded that he would send the carriage back as soon as he got back to the manor and asked that Alexander not smile, but answer him something. At last there was peace and quiet. Alexander was glad that the interference was removed, and so Alex wanted to know the reason from his sister. Alexander asked his sister why she did that. Ophelia didn't know what he meant. Alex anticipated that she wanted to pretend like she didn't know anything. The guy said his sister left something in the office. Alex pulled the protagonist's hair out of his pocket. It was a small, unforeseen oversight. Judging by the silence, Alexander assumed he had caught Ophelia off guard. He was very curious as to what her next move would be. Ophelia said there could be no such thing. The study is always locked, after all, and she doesn't understand how anyone could get in there. And besides, Alex has the key. Alexander was very annoyed at the way she stretched out the end of phrases, as if to keep a hint of doubt in her gentle voice. Absolutely everything left reflective and stilted. It was exactly the same on the first day of the meeting. The moment Ophelia stepped out of the carriage, it seemed as if she was enveloped by all the world's misfortunes. Such a dangerous and chilling atmosphere hovered around her. Alexander wanted so badly to just hold her against him. Ophelia first called him Alexander, but then corrected herself and said Alex. It really embarrassed him that she was calling him Alex in this situation. Ophelia offered to come out clean and asked him if he was sure it was the office where the hair fell out. Alex was shocked at the look on her face. She straight up shows absolute certainty that he's wrong. Alex was already beginning to wonder if he had really messed something up, but he decided that couldn't be the case, because Alex had seen it with his own eyes. And the only people who knew what had happened were him and the one who found the hair first. Ophelia said she had no idea what he was talking about until he started connecting her to what had happened in the office. Alex decided to close the topic. If Ophelia says no, then that's the way it is. It was just a little strange to Alex, and his subordinates wouldn't pull something like this. The protagonist asked if Alex seriously thought servants were incapable of lying. The guy pretended not to know what she meant. Ophelia asked as he thought hard. Ophelia asked if Alexander had forgotten what had happened a few days ago. Alex thought she was about when he brought her to his chambers to apply the ointment, or about how they ran into each other in the library a place the sister doesn't frequent in normal times. Or maybe about the time they met on the training ground. The reason her sister came to her that day was because of Henrietta. The boy remembered this and was very angry with the maid. Alex ordered the butler to bring Henrietta to him right away. The gentleman asked the girl if it was her and clarified that he was talking about the documents. Henrietta said it was she, for she had already said she had found them in Mr. Adrian's room. But Alexander said that's not what he's talking about. The maid didn't know what he meant. Alexander couldn't figure out if she was fooling around or if she really didn't know anything. Henrietta had long since lost Alex's trust. Alex met Henrietta as a child. The father said she was the daughter of an acquaintance of his, and due to some circumstances she would now be staying with them. Alex asked the girl for sure if she wanted to join the academy, because with her skills she could become a great mage. But Henrietta refused. Besides, she's only the daughter of a bankrupt aristocratic family, and a maid's job suits her. The Duke didn't understand why Henrietta refused to go to the academy, and for what reason she started doing hard labor as a servant. However, Alex realized from the very beginning with what look she was looking at him with and suggesting to be together. Alex told the maid that he thought she already understood perfectly well. Her duties include cleaning Sister Ophelia's chambers, so it wasn't hard for her to pick up a loose hair and plant it in Alexander's office. And she is not the Count's maid. So Alex wondered why she was showing up in his chambers. Henrietta said the Count told her he was short-handed. This really surprised Alex, and he couldn't believe it. The maid didn't want to believe that the master suspected her, because she was only telling the truth. It was already pissing Alexander off. And Ophelia sits and beholds such an unsightly scene. The sister finally started calling her brother Alex. However, in the current situation, Ophelia may once again become alienated. He thought it would work out by digging a little deeper. Alexander sent Henrietta away and said they would talk when the maid had calmed down. Ophelia decided and went herself because there was no reason for her to sit here. Besides, she's full. Alexander didn't believe her because she hadn't even touched the main course. Ophelia only said that in the mornings, scone was more than enough for her. Alexander said that his sister had begun to lose weight upon arriving at the duchy, so he would keep an eye on her at dinner. This embarrassed Ophelia a little. She didn't understand why she had to push the man around like that. 
Ophelia approached the maid and said that she would start with an excuse if she were her. Alex was outraged that his sister was covering for the maid. Alexander revealed that Henrietta could have made a false accusation against Ophelia. But about that? That's different. The protagonist remembered how the maid found the necklace and said that she hadn't stolen anything and was sure that my lady wanted to make a mess and so had deliberately hidden the pendant. But the maid said that my lady was probably just joking. Ophelia knew it was a lie because she didn't want the maid to be reprimanded, so she hid the fact that she was the one who stole the pendant. Ophelia told Alex that she was used to it by now. The maid thanked the protagonist because if it wasn't for her, Henrietta would have taken the blame that way. Henrietta cried and said she found those documents by accident and didn't bring her hair into the gentleman's office. The girl swore it was all true because she couldn't unfairly accuse the one who would very soon become her significant other. Ophelia had been waiting for the moment she would say that. The main character said that the maid who stole the pendant was kicked out on purpose by her mother because she was afraid Ophelia might do something to her. The maid couldn't check why she hadn't realized it before. The reason why she was constantly disturbed by my lady was not jealousy of her lord. The maid couldn't believe it, but Ophelia was a mage too, and so strong that Henrietta is no match for her. Alexander asked his sister if she was bored of looking at the same view outside the window. Ophelia wondered when else she would be able to see such snowfall. Ophelia said she needed to see enough before she left. At that time, Ophelia was already 23 years old. Alex noticed that his sister sounded like she was about to leave the duchy right now. Alexander was already 19 years old. The guy said her sister's words hurt and asked her to think about the fact that if she left, her little brother would be all alone. Alex stepped closer. Alex put his hand on Mistress's shoulder and noticed that there was an even more pleasant scent coming from her today. Taking his hair in his other hand, he asked if his sister had applied perfume. Ophelia wanted to say something, but she was beaten to it by Alex, who asked if he had crossed the line for the umpteenth time. Ophelia agreed. He realized it himself. The main character asked what people would think of them. Alexander said with a smile that everyone would think they were a very friendly brother and sister. It seemed that her and Alexander's estrangement was a thing of the past. However, over the course of three years, they have become very close. Ophelia asked if Alex still reads books like that. Ophelia assumed he was amused by stories of a child killing his own parents. My sister remarked that Alex had unusual taste. Alex said that this kind of work is exhilarating. Ophelia asked if that meant he wasn't protesting in a similar way. A button fell off. Alexander reported that he realized the button was barely holding when he buttoned up. Eventually, it really came off. He didn't know what to do, since Henrietta was on vacation. Ophelia just told the guy to get Mago. Alex didn't know who Mago was. The sister said it was a maid that had started working here recently, but the guy said he didn't have to because it wasn't an urgent matter, so he'd solve this button situation later somehow. In the end, Ophelia said she would help. They came into the room, and the sister asked if Alexander had brought other clothes to change into. Alex didn't understand why, since Ophelia had once said he had a good body. The protagonist was sure he hadn't heard her then. The guy asks his sister why she's so embarrassed. Nothing will happen if, as brother and sister, they take off their clothes in front of each other. Ophelia agreed and said that if she did, it would be a big mess. Ophelia decided to talk about housekeeping. The protagonist asked if engagement would have solved the problem. Alex said he was too young to think about getting married. Ophelia didn't understand in what sense he was young. Alex said that his sister was treating him like a small child herself after all. No alcohol. You can't stay up too late. The nurse said it was self-inflicted. The guy put his hand on Ophelia's arm and told her to be careful because she might hurt herself. Suddenly, a butler knocked on the room. He apologized and asked if he could come in. The man said they had a visitor from the capital. The man immediately said hello and asked if he, such a stranger, could come into his room. Alex said he felt like he was already in. He didn't understand why the man was now asking for his permission. The guest apologized and said his name was Claude. He said there was no cause for concern. After all, he is by no means a suspicious person. Alex noticed a gold plaque with a drawing of a wolf on it. It was an influential person of the imperial family, an investigator of the first class. The guest decided to cut to the chase, because he thinks there's no one in attendance who has forgotten the Arpad couple's carriage tragedy from three years ago. On the steeply sloping road, the wheels of the carriage began to slip, resulting in a fall off a cliff. Surprisingly, however, the investigation turned up a few things. They learned that what happened was not just an accident, but an incident planned by someone. 
Ophelia and Alex were shocked, and the guest came to inform the gentleman that under the mask of an accident lies a premeditated murder. Claude decided to summarize the results of the investigation. The fact of the carriage falling off the cliff is true. However, there is something suspicious. Someone deliberately spun the wheels by loosening them. Ophelia said it would be good if the culprit was found soon. Claude wished it himself. According to the conclusion of the investigation, the carriage caught fire as a result of friction. This friction was formed during the fall off the cliff. However, Ophelia or Alexander may have seen some suspicious people that day. The main character wasn't sure because she slept late that day. That day, her mom promised her she would be back soon. Ophelia gave a clear answer that she had not seen anyone that day who could be called suspicious. Claude indicated that he had one more question. The man asked if there was anyone who would dare such a thing. The girl said there were too many people who could be under suspicion. There was nothing Ophelia could say about the previous Duke of Arpad. However, her mother was hardly beloved by everyone. On the contrary, she was surrounded by envious and jealous personages. Claude has picked up on the fact that, being the daughter of the deceased Duchess, Ophelia has a rather cold-blooded appreciation for her. The girl decided to ask if there were any more questions, but that was the end of it. Ophelia decided to ask Claude if they had seen each other somewhere before. The man was surprised that facial features like his were so common. He picked up on the fact that a lot of people had told him he was pretty enough for an investigator. His heart pinched after hearing the words of such a beauty. Ophelia said he was a very nice gentleman. The man was pleased and thanked for the praise. Ophelia decided to leave since there were no more questions. Claude thanked the girl for cooperating with him and shook the mistress's hand. The protagonist promised that she would try to help in any way she could. Claude reported that although you can't take a personal interest in an investigation, but her smile is really beautiful. The man remarked that it was a rather hackneyed phrase, but Ophelia said, praise is always nice to receive. The girl assured herself that there was nothing wrong and it was all over three years ago. Upon discovering the closet syringe, Ophelia burned it. Well, for what it's worth, it has nothing to do with the investigation. Both Claude and everyone else shouldn't know the truth. Ophelia decided to keep her mom's secret. Alex said his sister looked like she was having fun. Judging from his facial expression, Ophelia assumed he was still angry. Though there's nothing odd about it for the homeowner, previously. Claude offered to interview everyone in turn, but Alex said that as head of the family, he had not consented, and there was no reason to interrogate them. Claude apologized and showed the order of the imperial family that had been issued to him. And to him, this order is paramount. The investigator surmises that the gentleman doesn't seem to be ready to hold a conversation, so he should start with this lovely lady. Ophelia agreed. Ophelia didn't understand in what sense she looked cheerful. Alexander said he felt like his sister knew better in which one. The main character thought about why everyone was so tense, and it turns out that it was about the investigator, because he was a surprise guest. Ophelia said she could understand him, because I'm used to this kind of thing myself. Claude said he had heard that she would be leaving Arpad Manor at the end of the Duke's coming-of-age ceremony and asked if that was true. Ophelia reported that this was true, and they had already discussed the matter. Claude asked where she was planning to go. Ophelia admitted that she would like to travel the Holy Empire. Claude commented that this is an excellent choice, and in particular, I would like to climb the stairs of the saints. Ophelia realized what he meant and said that it was the most famous place in the Holy Empire. It is said that with each step, a person gets rid of sins. Ophelia asked Claude if he would like to go there to purify himself. The man said he couldn't work as an investigator if he were a sinner. I also noticed that there are a lot more legends. If the belief that a man and a woman will be bound together forever, but only if they walk up the stairs holding hands. Claude asked Ophelia if she had a date she wanted to go up together. Ophelia's comment was that she thought the man was hinting that he wouldn't mind being that very couple. Claude said that wasn't what he meant, but since she thought so, he was interested in the answer. The protagonist said she felt like she would only burden such a busy man. Claude asked if Ophelia's inclination was that if he said yes, she was really willing to go up with him. Ophelia laughed and said that Claude was free to interpret her words however he wanted. After sitting for a bit longer, Ophelia announced that she would be on her way out. Alex tried to stop his sister. Ophelia didn't understand what was wrong because he hadn't finished his meal yet, after all, or he thought she looked cheerful again. Her sister said that she understood Alexander and that he was not pleased, but somehow Alex had overreacted because she was already in a state of turmoil over the news of the murder.
and Alexander also says she's having fun. Ophelia said he wasn't the only one who knew how to be angry. The guy interrupted her and told her that he was Alex and implied that he didn't like the formality on her part. Ophelia was very angry and didn't realize if it mattered right now. Alexander yelled too, but said it was important to him. Alex accepted that he was out of line. However, he thinks she's the one who made him such an idiot. Ophelia didn't listen to him when he tried to hold her back, begging her hundreds of times not to leave. Alex didn't understand how Ophelia could have that kind of conversation with that man. Ophelia didn't understand why he was making that face, as if he was hurt by what had happened. They had fought far more than once in the last three years, but he always turned a blind eye and said it couldn't be helped. However, why he had that look in his eyes right now was not clear. Ophelia wondered what he wanted from her. The protagonist asked Alex if he remembered that he had promised to let her go when he came of age. Alex asked if another promise could be made. Ophelia shouted in fury that if it had been that simple, she would have been right from the start. Alex told his sister that everything was fine. He asked his sister to speak slowly and take her time. Ophelia wanted to say something, but stopped herself. The girl apologized for that and said she was just misled for a moment. Ophelia admitted that she was going to tell him that. She had it in her head about her mom promising her something and telling her it was the last time. These thoughts tormented her. The protagonist asked Alex for them to stop it. Otherwise, they might get suspicious. Alex asked if she was now worried about her brother or the investigator she was seeing for the first time today. Ophelia asked that he not overreact, because between a normal brother and sister, such a thing was unacceptable. Alex asked if they were the usual brother and sister. The nurse said these conversations bore her. It wasn't clear to her what they were, if not regular brother and sister. It wasn't clear to her what he wanted, assuming he wanted to stop the sibling game. Alexander said his sister is very violent, for despite the time they had spent together, Ophelia thought him so worthless and began to hug her sister. Ophelia asked in what sense, worthless, because she remembered saying something like that once. So the girl asked that he not distort the truth. Alex has matured. What ends up happening is the same thing that happened three years ago. Perhaps Alex's soul still dwells on the day of the funeral. Ophelia asked that Alex stop shedding tears, but the boy didn't want to. Ophelia said she didn't want either. Alex stood up and asked what his sister didn't want. She was no better herself. For a moment ago, Ophelia had been seething with anger. But to see Alex crying, with tears gathered on his eyelashes, I thought about how cute it was. The sister said she didn't want her brother not to cry. Alexander said that wasn't true. Ophelia wiped away her tears. Alex told his sister that she liked seeing him like that. This surprised Ophelia very much, and she interrogated. The guy said she's only gentle with her brother when he's in tears. Ophelia pinched her brother's cheek again. Alex apologized and said it was really his fault. Here's the topic closing in on itself again. Well, it couldn't be helped. The anger evaporated in a flash. Ophelia said it was time for them to go to their rooms. Because this is not the time to have a verbal altercation, because we have a murder case to deal with. And Ophelia doesn't want Claude to interrogate her with questions about whether she's the one who brought Alex to tears. Alexander agreed. Ophelia said it was getting late, so Alex should go rest. The guy swept her up as well. Ophelia went into the room, and after waiting a little while, came right out. It seemed to her that they were being overheard by one ratty little rat. Ophelia asked what about the vacation she had given her since Henrietta was already back. The girl was frightened. The maid started to say that the weather was insatiable and there was nowhere to go. Ophelia said she was clear and Henrietta would continue to consider this place her home even after her death. Ophelia said that since she had arrived, she could go to rest, but that she should start work tomorrow. Henrietta thanked her and thought about the fact that this was the last time Ophelia would look down on her. For the past three years, Henrietta has been developing her magical abilities with the help of the memoirs kept in the mansion. She supposed my lady would surely be blown away by her power, and then the gentleman looks at Henrietta again. When that happens, the maid will, undoubtedly. Ophelia asked the maid what she was thinking about, assuming she wanted to tell her something. Ophelia thought Henrietta had snuck into the library like a mouse because she and Alex were alone. However, she had been preparing all this time to get her revenge. The protagonist grabbed the hand of the maid and said that she had covered for her the whole time, and as the maid wanted her to, left Henrietta with her and asked if this was her thanks. Henrietta couldn't believe that she had suppressed her power in no time. 
she thought herself very stupid and realized that she could have realized from the beginning that her level of magic was no comparison to the amounts of Ophelia's power. Ophelia said that when she left, the place would be hers anyway, so the maid shouldn't fool around. The protagonist lifted her face and asked if she understood her. The protagonist has re-injected magical power into the body of the maid against her will, so she won't be able to move for a while. Henrietta agreed. Claude said hello to Mrs. Ophelia. It was very strange for the girl to see him so early in the morning. The investigator said she could just call him Claude. Ophelia asked Mr. Claude on what business he was here at this early hour. Claude said that he wanted to ask the lady something, but showed himself somewhat tactless, and the man asked for permission for him to visit her at another time. But Ophelia stopped him and said it was all right, and he could speak on what matter he had come for. There were a couple mishaps last night. The investigator, by chance, could have seen Ophelia with Alex and Henrietta then, or perhaps he could have noticed the protagonist using magic. Claude said that it was really nothing serious, and he was only going to inquire about something concerning Mr. Duke. After saying that, the mistress became even more curious. The investigator said he thinks Ophelia remembers his first day at Arpad Manor. Since he, as an investigator, has a search warrant, he can access all the rooms in the mansion. Just recently, Claude looked into the Duke's chambers. Though he was uncomfortable, Alexander still let the investigator into the room. However, upon opening one of the drawers, Claude discovered a very old diary, and when he was about to look at his notes, Mr. Duke threw him out into the hallway in no time. The look on his face was so frightening that it seemed at that moment Alex could have killed someone. Claude realized that this diary was very important to him, but he wondered if his sister thought his brother's reaction was overreacting. Ophelia hesitated and took a moment to notice that Alex was really overreacting. Alexander asked his sister to keep it a secret that he kept a diary, and also kicked the investigator out of the room because of this very diary. It turns out there's something in the tapes that Alex doesn't want anyone to see. Ophelia became very curious as to what he was so insistently hiding. She said she believes that such a strong reaction is due to the fact that Alex is not used to someone meddling in his personal life, which that diary is part of, and asked the investigator if he was headed somewhere. The man said the weather was magical today, so he was going to go to the village. Ophelia asked if Claude would like to see her chambers since he was already here. The man offered to postpone the search until next time, otherwise it would be too cavalier on his part. Alex said that reading was his hobby and followed her to the library all the time. However, the absence of books in his chambers struck Ophelia as odd. And now there's a diary. The protagonist was very curious as to what it was that Alexander wanted to withhold. The chambers were cleaned and the linen changed. That means no one enters the room until Alex arrives. Claude is gone, Alex is at practice, and Henrietta is bedridden. It's the best time ever. Ophelia was glad she had found the diary so quickly. There was nothing written on the first page. On the second page, it was written about January 11th, 295, according to the calendar of the Devon Empire. This surprised the main character very much because this date was today's date. Suddenly, a caption began to appear on the pages asking Mistress why she was peeking. The diary was covered in blood. Ophelia threw that diary on the floor. The girl assumed it was a warning to someone who might read the diary, and Alex feared that Claude would get to those entries, but it could have been a warning to her as well. The protagonist decides she's digging too deep, and thank goodness the flip side is okay. November 21st, 291. Alexander came with his mother to Arpad Manor for the first time. November 21st, 291, in the calendar of the Devon Empire. He's got a new mom. She was as beautiful as an angel. And now he understood why his father had fallen in love with her at first sight. Behind the angel, stepmother stood O. He walked over to greet her, but suddenly his heart began to pound frantically. Ended up not being able to say hello to O and went back to the mansion. Alexander thought he had caught some disease, so he decided to visit a doctor but he was not found to have any abnormalities. The doctor reported that he was completely healthy. It was leading him astray. Ophelia now realized that Alex had started keeping a diary from that moment on. The girl hesitated whether to read further. November 23, 291, in the calendar of the Devon Empire. On his way down for lunch, Alex ran into O. Alexander thought he was making her uncomfortable, so he sat back farther away. The protagonist recalled that such and such had happened, and she was going to say hello, 
but it was hard for her to do so at the time. Ophelia decided it was really just a diary, but it was unclear why Alex was angry with Claude. The Duke even gave such a frightening warning at the beginning. November 28, 291, in the calendar of the Devon Empire. Tonight was the first time they had dinner as a family. During the meal, Alex's heart pounded like crazy. Afterward, in an effort to calm it down, the guy was inclined to sleep. A sudden knock on the door woke him up. In the middle of the night, G came to see him. G was up to her old tricks again. Even though summer was long past, she stood before the gentleman in just her shirt and offered to sleep with her. Alexander was sick of women like that. Ophelia remarked that there was nothing surprising about that because it came out that she really was acting like a mouse. After that came similar recordings and nothing much. Ophelia decided she should put the journal back where it belonged. But suddenly, she noticed something strange. She noticed there was a date of December 13th, 291 on the Devon Empire calendar. December 13th, 291 in the calendar of the Devon Empire. For the first time in a long time, Alex decided to get in the carriage and explore the surroundings of their territory. As he rode, a certain feeling never left him. The wheels seemed to be loose. Alexander looked at them, and suddenly a great idea popped into his head. Thoughts began to pop into Ophelia's head that he was the one who had arranged the carriage incident. Suddenly, the protagonist heard a sound, and so she decided to hide. But there's nowhere to hide in this room. Alex walked into the room, and Ophelia didn't realize how she should be. Ophelia didn't understand why her brother was back so early. The girl realized that if he noticed her, it would be bad. The situation has taken a critical turn. Alex took off his sweatshirt and sat down on the couch. Ophelia assumed he was going to go wash soon. This was great, because if the protagonist was careful, she could get away unnoticed. Ophelia was very curious as to why he had such a disgruntled look on his face. The girl assumed something happened at practice. Alex called out his sister's name. The guy said not sister, just Ophelia. The girl didn't understand why he looked so haggard. The brother went into the bathroom, and the girl quickly got up and started running away. But when she turned and looked at the couch, she saw her portrait there. She didn't stop and ran off to her room unnoticed. Ophelia didn't know what to do, and decided that perhaps she should pay a visit to Alexander's room today as well, because she hasn't read everything, and most of all, she wants to know what this great idea is. The good thing was that Claude was still in the village. However, the problem was Alexander. If the same thing happens as yesterday, there'll be trouble. Suddenly, Alexander came to her. He knocked on the door, asking if his sister was in the room. The girl realized that if she pretended she wasn't there, she'd be even more suspicious. Ophelia asked her brother what he was doing here at such an early hour. Alexander had noticed that she had been getting up earlier lately. Ophelia was surprised and said that she felt like she was waking up at the same time. The main character decided to ask her brother where he was going so early in the morning. The guy said he heard that the feudal laborers had started snow removal, so he decided to go there. In other words, it meant that for a few hours, Alex's room would be empty. Ophelia suggested they go downstairs together. That surprised Alex, and he asked again. The nurse said she'd walk him out. The girl was very happy because she didn't think the problem would be solved so quickly. Ophelia realized that she was very lucky, but the door was locked. The girl was very much surprised at the fact that he was locking the door with a key, but she supposed that he might have gotten wind that she had entered his chambers. The girl didn't know what to be, because she could melt the lock on it like she did last time with the study. Suddenly, Alexander appeared from behind, and he told his sister that the door wouldn't open that way, or she's going to melt the lock again. Ophelia couldn't believe her eyes. She didn't realize when he had time, and it scared him even more again, because it meant Alex knew a lot. The guy gave the key to his sister and asked if she would come in. Ophelia didn't know what to do to go in, as if nothing had happened, or to stand and continue. The protagonist didn't understand the purpose of him letting her in, assuming he didn't know about the diary. The protagonist decided that if he knew about the diary, she would try to get out of the situation somehow. Alexander said she wasn't very careful this time, and her hair fell out right under the desk. Alexander wondered again if she would say it was someone else's adventure, and if not, what was she so interested in since she had gotten into his room? The boy took the diary and handed it to his sister. Alex said he knew she was interested in the diary. That was true, but Ophelia said she didn't want her brother to force himself to show the tapes. 
Alex guessed that's exactly what she would say. However, it doesn't matter, because he can't have any secrets from his sister. Alexander knew everything already when the investigator entered his chambers, because I expected him to go to his sister and snitch, because he probably resented being put out the door. Ophelia asked if he had written in his diary, don't peek, because he knew she was coming. That's exactly what happened. Alexander didn't want his sister to look at the diary, but in the end, it was all to no avail. Ophelia said it wasn't useless because she had read everything, but Alexander didn't believe it. Ophelia didn't understand what the point of lying to her was. The guy hadn't noticed that she had plenty of time. The guy was really scared that she heard everything and hid then under the table when he said her name. The main character said he said her name and she heard it. Alexander was very embarrassed and begged her to forget everything that had happened then. Ophelia didn't think it would come out that way, but decided to read because of the permission won. December 15, 291, in the calendar of the Devon Empire. It was very hard for Alexander to eat alone with O. A lump rose in his throat from excitement, so he decided it would be better to avoid eating together for a while. This Ophelia remembered. That day, Mom went on a wedding trip, and then the next page is the day the accident happened. In the afternoon, Alexander heard the news of the carriage accident. What was happening was like a dream. Stepmother died on the spot. Father was rushed to the hospital, but father never opened his eyes. Immediately after the incident, an investigation was launched. According to investigators, the carriage's wheel flew off, eventually causing it to fall off the cliff. However, something struck Alexander as odd. It said exactly what he remembered, but Ophelia didn't know what he meant. Ophelia asked her brother if it was true that the wheels had been changed. Sister didn't understand what the point of that phrase about a great idea was then. The protagonist started looking for that phrase. December 13, 291, where Alexander looked at the loosened wheels and had a great idea. Alexander asked if he necessarily had to answer. Ophelia said it was mandatory, so she wouldn't suspect him of something very scary. Alex said, if truth be told, he was going to explore the neighborhood with his sister that day under the pretext of changing his wheels. Ophelia thought it was a joke, but her brother assured her it was true, and she should remember that he had suggested she go out for a walk together. Ophelia thought for a moment. The protagonist remembered that her brother had actually said similar things to her that day. Then Alex told her that he thought she liked being cooped up in four walls. The sister did not deny it herself, so the guy offered her a useful walk, but that day the protagonist did not want to go anywhere because of the severe cold. Ophelia didn't understand who was asking as much as he was, because even she couldn't understand it. The guy said he was extremely inexperienced back then, but things are probably different now. The girl yelled that that wasn't the problem, and he had no idea that she suspected him all the time, because he's always hovering around her and trying to get close to her. The protagonist had no idea what Alex really wanted from her. However, I had no idea he was so inexperienced. Only after reading the diary did all of Alexander's actions make sense. The guy himself didn't realize that he had fallen in love with his sister at first sight. Ophelia began to read further. December 18th, 291. It said that last night O tried to leave the mansion, but Alexander still couldn't let her go. Alexander is sure of something known to have happened. As he confusedly tidied up his father's office, he saw a syringe in the bookcase. Ophelia was horrified because she was sure she had burned everything. Alexander wished his sister wouldn't stop. He certainly didn't want her to read. But at the same time, he wished Ophelia would read the diary to the end. December 19th, 291. Alex cupped O's cheek. O is a woman. The next date is December 27th, 291. Alexander wanted to kill A for speaking nonsense without knowing his place. The guy didn't want to believe it was O's fault. Alexander lived with the idea that he was deluded. Ophelia told her brother that she didn't want to read anymore. But the Duke said it was too late, and they had come too far to stop. April 11, 294. Alexander admits he loves O like a man. The guy was sure it was love at first sight. That's the only thing that could explain the rapid beating of his heart. July 16, 294. Alexander recognized the cause of the accident. The bundle of wheels was melted. July 17, 294. It had something to do with the cabinet lock being melted down and maybe it's G. July 20th, 294. G cried with Alexandru and out of the blue asked for a vacation. 
and it looks like it's not G's fault. August 4th, 294. Oh, Mag or G didn't tell the truth. September 28th, 294. Alexander didn't know the reason, but it seemed to him that O was the culprit. Only he should know about it. September 29th, 294. Oh, probably a criminal. November 30th, 294. O keeps emphasizing the fact that the day of her departure is just a short time away. December 7th, 294. Alex can't let his sister go. December 23rd, 294. Alexander no longer cares if O is guilty or not. December 26, 294. Wishes O was around. On December 28, 294, a guy begs Ophelia to be with him. January 3, 295. In the two weeks before Alexander's coming-of-age ceremony, he has to figure out a way to keep O away. Ophelia closed the journal and handed it to her brother. He realized that Alexander had suspected her and for three years had believed her to be the murderer of his father and mother, but he still loved her. Ophelia asked if love could be born under such circumstances. The girl yelled that it wasn't her. Duke tried to calm her down, and her sister cried. 